Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to check out Ubuntu 22.10, which was actually released today. And this release is very exciting. The latest version of Ubuntu is actually powered by GNOME 43. I've reviewed GNOME 43 on this channel not that long ago, so you can check out that video if you have no idea what GNOME 43 brings to the table. But having GNOME 43 in Ubuntu 22.10 is very welcome. But that's not all. There's a lot of features in this release that I can't wait to show you. And during my time with Ubuntu 22.10, I have to say, I quite like it. It's a great release. As far as why I feel that it's a great release, well, let's actually dive into the review and I'll tell you all about it. And here it is. Here's the Ubuntu 22.10 desktop. What you're seeing right now is Ubuntu 22.10 installed on actual hardware. On this channel, I always use real hardware for all of my distro reviews, unless I tell you guys otherwise. In this case, I actually have Ubuntu 22.10 installed on the 2022 System76 Oryx Pro, and this model actually has an OLED screen. I will be reviewing this one very soon, so stay tuned for that. But since I have this new laptop in the studio right now, I figured why not use it for the review? Now, first of all, Ubuntu 22.10 is what's known as an interim release. Unlike long-term support releases or LTS releases, interim releases focus on new features and bleeding edge software. The trade-off, though, is that by using an interim release, that means you'll have to upgrade to a newer version of Ubuntu twice a year, as these are only supported for just nine months. LTS releases, on the other hand, are supported for up to five years and are a perfect fit for those of you that would rather not deal with as much change as you'd find in interim releases. Now, anytime I review a new version of Ubuntu, especially after an LTS release, the question that I try to answer is, should you upgrade to this new version? Now, at first, that might seem like a no-brainer, right? I mean, if you're using a specific operating system, why not upgrade to the latest version of that operating system? I mean, staying on an old version usually is a bad idea. But in this case, Ubuntu 22.04 is an LTS release. What that means is that it actually benefits from up to five years of support. So by upgrading to 22.10, it's actually somewhat of a downgrade because you're losing several years of support in the process. So then when it comes to upgrading to an interim release from an LTS release, the main question then is, is it worth it? Are the features in this new version actually so great that it justifies the downgrade in support? And normally, I actually tell you guys to just stay on the LTS releases, but considering that this new version of Ubuntu features GNOME 43, especially after Ubuntu dropped the ball on GNOME 42 in the previous release, that actually makes Ubuntu 22.10 a lot more appealing. GNOME is actually my favorite desktop environment, and GNOME features an entire suite of applications to provide all of the core functionality that you'd expect in an operating system, including things such as a file manager, photo viewer, text editor, and a lot more. In fact, I've already reviewed GNOME 43 on this channel, so I won't repeat everything here. I will mention a few things, but if you want the full scoop on GNOME 43, then check out my full review. I'll leave a card for that video right about here. One of the biggest changes that you'll find in GNOME 43 is the addition of the new Quick Toggles feature. Quick Toggles gives you quick access to system-related controls, such as Wi-Fi, volume, power modes, and more. And when you compare the old menu against the new one, you should see the difference right away. The new version looks like a complete redesign. And it's not like there's settings here that you didn't have access to in the past, but the benefit here is that it takes fewer clicks to access many of the controls. And that's definitely welcome. And that's just one of the many features that's included in GNOME 43. Again, I have a full review on my channel already that covers GNOME 43 if you want to learn more. But Ubuntu's implementation of GNOME is more than just the new features that GNOME itself provides. Ubuntu actually puts quite a bit of polish on top of their implementation of GNOME, complete with a custom theme and even a panel on the left-hand side. Personally, I feel that the custom GNOME theme goes a long way to make the GNOME desktop appear more modern and attractive in Ubuntu. And when I show the normal on change GNOME alongside Ubuntu's implementation of GNOME, you can start to see how many tweaks they actually make. And this is just the visual tweaks that I'm referring to right here, but there's a lot more than just that. There's also changes under the hood that Ubuntu adds that increases the performance of GNOME as well. Another custom tweak that I like in this release was actually introduced in the previous version, but I just mention it here because I actually like it that much. And I'm referring to the ability to edit the accent colors of the desktop, which is actually a feature not normally found in GNOME. 
So that's an example of another of Ubuntu's customizations. In addition to that, you'll also find additional tweaks all over the desktop as well. And another example of Ubuntu's custom tweaks is the new app spread feature of the panel, which shows you an overview of each window that's opened from an application when you click on it. One of the things that I love most about this new version of Ubuntu is that this time around, the GNOME experience is actually vastly improved over the previous release. Reason being, last time we had GNOME 42, and that's not a surprise. Every version of Ubuntu nowadays, they actually base on the latest version of GNOME. But last time, we didn't even get the entirety of the GNOME 42 experience. In fact, it was an inconsistent mess of mismatched parts. So we had some components of GNOME 42, but we also had components of previous versions of GNOME. So it was actually so bad, I dubbed it Franken GNOME because it was a Frankenstein abomination of mismatched parts. But this time around, for the most part, we have the full GNOME 43 experience in Ubuntu 2210. It is heavily customized, which not everyone will enjoy, but the implementation of GNOME in Ubuntu 2210 is more consistent and overall, the experience is much better. If you're a fan of the GNOME desktop like I am, then that alone might make the upgrade to 2210 worth it for you. And like I mentioned earlier, there's smaller improvements all over the desktop that are also quite welcome. For example, the WebP image format is supported out of the box in this release. And this basically means that if you download a WebP image file and attempt to view it, you don't have to worry about it opening up in a strange application like Firefox. The image viewer properly supports this format now, which is great. Under the hood, Ubuntu 2210 features Linux kernel 5.19, which is definitely welcome. But actually, that's not a feature that's unique to Ubuntu 2210. Ubuntu 2204 will upgrade to this newer kernel as well, but that might take some time to happen. And with Ubuntu 2210, you could utilize kernel 5.19 right now without waiting for the next point release of Ubuntu 2204. And this new kernel actually features some GPU improvements along with some additional improvements as well. So although the new kernel isn't game changing or anything like that, you should only benefit from having it with this release. Another feature that I quite like about Ubuntu 2210 is that Ubuntu is moving to Pipewire in this release. Now, if you haven't heard of Pipewire before, it's a replacement for Pulse Audio. Pulse Audio is the technology that's provided the audio stack in Ubuntu for longer than I can remember. And now Pipewire is what provides audio in Ubuntu 2210. Now, if you don't notice anything different in this release at all, then I guess the migration of Pipewire is awesome. I didn't notice anything on my end, good or bad, so I figure when you're migrating to something, if you don't notice the difference, then I guess that's not the worst thing. It's certainly better than things crashing or something not working at all. And by using Ubuntu 2210, you're actually trying out the latest audio technology, which is awesome. And I also enjoy the performance enhancements in Ubuntu's implementation of GNOME as well, which means in some cases, it's going to be faster than in other distributions. And you know what? Even Debian is going to take the patches that Ubuntu provides to the GNOME desktop and implement it in their distribution as well. So it's actually not going to be just Ubuntu that's benefiting from this. Their work is being used elsewhere, and I think that's a great thing. Now for me, Ubuntu has had very fast performance for quite a while now, so I don't really notice anything different here. And again, I think sometimes not noticing a difference is a good thing. Ubuntu 2210 feels fast, responsive, it keeps up with my workload, and at no point did I feel like it was sluggish. So overall, I have to say, Ubuntu 2210 is a great release. I actually quite like it. And especially considering how last time around we had a horrible implementation of GNOME, I feel like the GNOME 43 implementation in 2210 is actually a breath of fresh air. And all things considered, I highly recommend Ubuntu 2210. It's a fantastic release. Just keep in mind that you are losing a few years of support if you do upgrade to this, but if you do, I don't really feel like you'll regret it. Then again, if you are using Ubuntu 2204 right now and you don't mind the GNOME experience that you have, it's probably better to just stay on that release. But when it comes to upgrading to 2210, you will gain a great GNOME experience, so it's worth the consideration. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of this new release in the comments down below. And in the meantime, I have some awesome content coming very soon that I can't wait for you guys to see. So definitely subscribe to Learn Linux TV, and I'll see you in the next video.